guys good afternoon welcome back to my channel my name is Lerato Zivata your procurement specialist and of course business coach today I want to share with you the hidden rules and gems about procurement that you may not often hear about but unfortunately it does affect any business the reason these are hidden rules or unspoken truths you know in procurement is because by nature of you know procurement and supply chain is that we want to keep things fair of course you know like um no biases of some sort or any you know form of unfair dealings that may arise but be that as it may i do want to share with you these things especially if you are someone that may be dealing with procurement um both private sector and public sector i'm sure this happens right across now and what i then want to start with is that the highest bidder does not always win the tender I know this is one of the I don't know cliche type of topics um, because some people think that it's not the case there are different variables that come with a motivation of why the second beta or even third beta may be winning the tender right I know this is news flash it's not something that you guys may be aware of it's not something that which you are told I don't know but the reality is that that's not always the case and I do want you guys to be aware of that um and one of the reasons why that may not be the case is that um, there could be some hectic risks associated with the one that is the winning bid in which the organization may not be prone or willing to accept as a risk exposure whether it's reputation or how the company is doing their operations some findings you know um you could do well on paper that's why sometimes in procurement we have site visits as other form of evaluation um steps uh, so if you could be looking good on paper but may actually not be that good um and some people are good at doing copy and paste work just to get those points but if you actually do you know in-depth check and analysis you may find that is not the case ne? the second point is inability for procurement to share with you the invitation list of everyone that is bidding um, on the particular rfq or rfp and or even sharing any shortlisted suppliers and the reasons um this happens is because we need to be discreet procurement has to be discreet in you know how tenders are received and interpretation of those bids and of course remember that it is a fair process or the rather intention is to be fair so if you're going to be sharing you know with five different suppliers that in this bid this is who's invited this is who's invited and and especially for private organizations particularly for this um point because they do close out of peace you wouldn't know who's invited you wouldn't know who's shortlisted for that for that matter and that's honestly speaking none of your business um not that you're rude but the idea is to keep information discreet and honor the values that come with um the practitioner's expectations in procurement field and therefore if you're not going to be honoring any non-disclosure you know type of uh, agreements and stuff then it's going to be a problem in fact guys one thing you need to know procurement signs declaration of interest themselves the practitioners that are working in those um, tenders or dealing with suppliers the internal evaluation team adjudication they have to also sign ndas they do not discuss you know the these type of tenders outside of the room so therefore they cannot now going you cannot now share uh, with other service providers that lerato and you know Paro a group are invited and zebo and i don't know deloitte and this and that and that it already works against the principles of non-disclosure and declaration of interest i know a lot of you guys were not aware that procurement does sign these things but literally all of them do ne? it is required by the um, i guess governance processes and policies to do that right the other unspoken expectation that procurement would not tell you is the risk of wrong associations guys this one is a tricky one um i have shared this somewhere on one of my videos on social media that the risk of wrong association does put a supplier at a disadvantage i'm saying this very slow so that you guys can understand what i'm talking about uh, wrong associations this talks to you know the risk of 
um, companies that were flagged uh, that did corruption, that were involved in money laundering, in crime. You know, if your organization or your name as a director seemingly appears with those type of, you know, um, organizations that were flagged like that, then that means you are not in the right associations. And that means the interpretation is that in procurement and organization, you may be dealing with a company that is, you know, high risk to the reputation of the organization. Can you imagine if you hire a contractor and when you are checking this guy or whoever that's coming to your house, the ID they were associated with someone who is now a criminal convicted with rape, murder, what, what, what. You're probably going to scare yourself, right? <laughs> So why would organization um, not do that type of check or even be scared for that matter for themselves? So of course, wrong associations guys do go far and you need to not involve yourself with such. If you have, I don't know, clear your name somehow, you know. Um, and of course there are other political associations that may not be in the right with the media with the law you know international relations etc you get the point ultimately what it what it is important is that procurement will tell you these things it is one of the due diligence checks that just happens that's just what it is another thing procurement might not even tell you guys is the reports right evaluation reports you will never know who scored what point go which tender or rfq process and stuff you will never know even if you seek and ask for feedback and say hi i've been tendering i'm not getting it right what am i not doing right king a wrong in this whole process you know what as best they'll give you a very high level response and again it goes back to protecting the interpretation the organization and saying things that may be lost in between and that is not the case so therefore you'll never know actually go technical how much you scored go be how much you scored go price how much you scored you know blah 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 unless you then um get a court order and that says you need to release these results and you've challenged the process and you have money and the lawyer to represent you um and there is a case in fact with that particular or a query of some sort with a particular tender maybe then they will be able to release those scores but under normal circumstances in j overall on average you will not private or public you will not get that in j in fact a lot of buyers will probably just ignore your email and pretend like they didn't see it and guys in general and daba it's not me i don't set the rules but that's just what happens procurement will tell you these things the other thing procurement will not tell you and keep quiet about it is negotiating payment terms every time you get a purchase order great and now you need to um, get paid they'll tell you our payment terms is 30 days few of them will put you on a seven day payment terms especially if you are a small enterprise um company and you're just starting out and stuff they may motivate for you to get paid in seven days or 14 days né? um or even do advanced payments i mean some organizations still do that of course depending on what type of service you're providing if it is capital intensive and you may need to buy equipment or order furniture you know because those furniture supplies they also demand 50 percent deposit depends on what products or service that you're offering then they may be able to negotiate those payment terms for you but under normal circumstances everyone is operating under the basis you have money you are well equipped as a business you have enough capital in your business therefore you'll be able to run you know in this order that's why i said in my last video that um people use their personal finances to fund purchase orders where else you could just be asking for advanced payment you could just be saying hey sorry i need 50 percent deposit or hey um let's arrange seven day payment something you know what i'm saying so they will not tell you afran Hore, listen we can negotiate these things um if you don't ask just ask guys ask who know about it no but then you have asked you know where you stand under normal circumstances no one will say because why it is part of the procurement kpis to kinda withhold some um capital working capital for the organization the more money the organization has without paying too many suppliers the better the kpis i did not tell you this so please <laughs> please okay one of the other points to mention as well is that side visits whenever procurement and business does side visits as part of the tender adjudication process what they will not tell you is that if you're operating from home that might disadvantage you in winning that bit even if you've been scoring highest because unfortunately no one wants to trust a vendor that is operating at the back of their yard all right you may have done everything right on paper 
trust me first evaluation process you have cracked it you're part of the shortlist you may be on your road to be winning the tender matter when they do side visits ah you get the Abna office where do people work oh my god it's one room or it's two room whatever you know you look at the complex they stay in or the house they stay in there's no security there's no cctv when they do side visits they check your health and safety there are no fire extinguishers i'm gonna have my signs i'm gonna have my labels like it's too risky right um and these are some of the compliance requirements that are needed unfortunately so therefore you may not even be getting that project you know because um during site visits they discover a lot of things that may be dissatisfaction to the buying organization and therefore unfortunately you just get disqualified or that works against your points and then you don't end up winning that project okay guys these are just some of the things that you may not know about procurement the other point i do want to also mention is that contract terms as well are negotiable if you receive a purchase order great you receive a contract from the any buying organization it does not mean you just have to take it and print and inside your company documents and sign if you are not happy with the terms that are in that contract you have every right to counter argue or insert what is reasonable for you um and just refuse to accept some of the terms it's not a one-way street it is a two-way street a contract is about two people agreeing in into this you know deal that you're about to enter if now you feel like some things are unfair if you don't know how to draft agreements please talk to someone who knows how to draft agreements alternatively ask the buyer to help you interpret this thing and the whoever the the procurement specialist is at or supply chain specialist there to say i'm not happy with clause one two three four five therefore can we please amend this clause one two three four five then in that case at least now again some of you are safe all right but they won't tell you why they want you to sign their paper meaning their terms and conditions which is the buying organization and then of course those terms are one way they're favorable to the business not them and then people do accept liability sometimes even unlimited liability which is such a big risk you never do that okay you never please hear me right do not ever accept any um liability clause that is not limited whatsoever because otherwise you're putting yourself in big trouble and i don't want that for you i don't want that for anybody at least in this channel last point one of the things that procurement will not tell you guys is that unfortunately if you are a startup unfortunately if the tender does not specify we are looking for smmes we are doing a set aside tender then e experience is not needed and you go and um tender you know if your business is just maybe one year or two years it's just in its infancy you just started there's too much risk too much risk to onboard a vendor like you so therefore you may not even be considered for that project unfortunately guys i'm not telling you so that they will not tell you but it happens you can complain you can moan you can say yeah you're not giving us opportunity blah blah blah, blah. unfortunately guys procurement also does not make the decisions alone in isolation of the end users and the business units that are actually using these services and this product remember procurement's role is to run a process on behalf of business which is supposed to be fair and according to the governance um policies so therefore if your business just started even if the owner could have 15 years of experience somewhere or in this you know industry they've been working in matter your business and your company was registered 2021 for example or 2022 you only have a year of operation in fact as an entity or two years then it's like if you are only two years actually what experience do you have so i don't know it takes a lot for others to start motivating and blah 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 to say you know what we can work with this guy whatever whatever but us and all circumstances in general the case is that you are still young your business is to grow unless of course there is a set aside tender that specifically focuses on smmes and they give you opportunities under this particular you know um sector or section therefore that categorization allows you to thrive as a small enterprise that just started then experience is not an issue however these are some of the things that you will not hear from procurement okay so guys good morning valentina it's a lot of things um i'm just highlighting the obvious others probably that i'm not even saying but what is important for you now to know at this stage is that these are the key ones that you will not be told but you need to know that this is what procurement needs and this is what happens anything related to a service provider at least 
that is providing a service out there okay so yes guys this is where i will end this video if you did like again this clip please do like share and subscribe and comment i appreciate the fact that you guys are subscribing guys please continue to do so and share with your friends share with people who are in business share with those who want to even start doing tenders because i'm here guys to give you what no one else can tell you this information is a premium please do say that somewhere in the comments if you think that's i'm lying <laughs> but anyway thank you so much guys i will chat with you on the next video continuously to like share and subscribe and i'll see you guys on the next one Bye!